Hello, hello. Hey, long time no talk. We're we're having a very productive Thursday. I see the usual suspects are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello, Jack. I can't stay the whole time, but uh, I am glad to be here. Awesome. All right, let's give it a minute for, for more people to join where we get some more joining in. And then I'll kick off. People keep coming in. Uh, we definitely touched on, on an interesting topic. All right, I guess we, we can start and I'll be posting recording shortly. So the, the purpose of this call is really for us to get into the, the shared space and ID8, how we can um, continue the work that we've been doing with the Core 19 challenge and jump into the next iteration of that, which is the, this epidemic question answering um, challenge, which is also organized by the same kind of group of people, uh, AI2, um, NIST, uh, and uh, National Library of Medicine, uh, Oregon Health and Science University, and figure out how do we take what we've got so far with the AI power literature review process and map it out to a very specific um, requirements of the challenge, which is basically taking the, the pieces of text and uh, showcasing them um, in regards to the questions that, that are being asked. And not sure if um, you guys had a chance to review the actual initial um, uh, data set of questions. Maybe I'll bring those up in here just so we have uh, something to look at. But the idea is that there is a broad uh, set of questions such as what is the origin of COVID-19? Uh, how does the coronavirus respond to the changes in weather? And, um, you know, these come from, from a group of researchers, I would imagine, that are trying to to build a generalized um, model for, for Q&A purposes. But there are also, you know, kind of more specific things like what type of hand sanitizer is needed to destroy COVID-19 or uh, what are the mortality rates overall in specific populations. So I, I actually, when I was reviewing this list initially, I had concerns about how uh, these questions are so kind of like different um, in terms of the, the structure. And uh, maybe you guys have some, uh, some thoughts about it because for me, it was hard to kind of map out what could be the solution because these questions require a completely different uh, thought process and the, the pipeline to address um, each of them individually. And maybe Mark, uh, Jack, you would be able to to jump in and here because um, you know you you have the most experience with this um, type of um, I would say not question and answering, but in in general knowledge retrieval. Well, so I I, I have a <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> sorry I have um, I have a kind of a North Star that I like. It's a book called Taming Text. And it's fundamentally written by the people that do the, um, the uh, Apache 
Apache Foundations, Apache Solar and Open NLP. <clears throat> and it has a very good chapter on, on the issue of processing questions. It, it, it outlines a number of steps you have to do. Among them are, uh, you know, is it, first of all, identify, is it a who, what, why, where, when kind of a question? And then the next is what kind of an answer does it expect? And then there is the process of reformulation of the question, sometimes called query writing, uh, in order to map it into the structure of whatever your analytical en engine expects. Now, if you, if you spend any time looking at the literature on how IBM's Watson worked, you got, you got, you got teased into some of this. Uh, so that would just be a, a hint at a place to start. There's plenty of literature on this idea of of answering questions. I'll stop there. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely make sense in terms of structuring the actual inputs outputs. Um, maybe Mark, um, you have some some ideas. Um, yeah, I'll be honest, I, I, I don't feel I exactly have the right expertise for this. My first intuition looking at these questions is that what is interesting, I mean, I've been looking a bit at the kind of knowledge you've been extracting with, um, not you, but what the Indra group has been extracting and others. And a lot of it is very micro level. And here we're looking at higher level order, higher order questions. And the connection between the micro facts and the higher order questions is necessarily complex. Um, and I think, you know, the first order of things is to map out which are the, the entities that are interesting at that level. And how do, how, how do those high level entities relate to lower level entities? But first differentiating them is the first thing. And then looking, and I, and I suspect that a lot of the answers will be at the level, they'll be composites, right? We'll be looking at statistical because it's, the, it's, it's a composite of many micro facts that add up to these higher level facts. And um, identifying which micro level facts are relevant is certainly useful, but I don't know if that's what the question answerer wants. And the relationship between that, even at a human level, uh, I think is difficult to fathom. Uh, much less at the machine learning level. But I do still think that it's interesting to look at, uh, think of it as cases. And okay, yeah, I, I will get into that. If I'm saying, does this cause that, or does this help that, I may not have all the mechanisms because the mechanisms are one aspect, but the other is cases. What evidence do I have that says this happened or this did not happen. Do we have examples of this? And the examples themselves will be controversial. But I think there's really two kinds of reasoning that happen in the mind of the question asker is do we have concrete cases evidence or and do we have mechanisms? And I certainly want to distinguish those. That's all I have to offer right now, sorry. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And uh, actually I had a question after and about say one of the questions is uh, what are the complications related to hypertension and COVID-19? So now there is the direct complication, say it could be, you know, more uh, ACE receptors or, or maybe more, more, you know, dysregulation of the coagulation because uh, COVID also affects coagulation uh, casket and clotting. But there's also the fact that uh, these people are treated with medicines, you know, people with hypertension or say general arrhythmia, uh, you know, other heart diseases, they could be treated with uh, ACE uh, uh, inhibitors or um, yeah, angiotensin, you know, receptor blockers or some kind of coagulation medication. So that could also affect, you know, COVID-19. So one is a direct effect of the disease itself and there is this other one. So I, I completely agree about this part about, um, uh, you know, what Mark said about uh, the uh, uh, evidence uh, and, and the mechanisms. That's, that's terrific and, and that sort of uh, can be linked to each other. But I think questions can also be linked. That's what's my question. Like, you know, how do you frame an independent question like that? You know, what are the complications? Are you saying like complications of the disease or complications from, treatment associated with the disease. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think what, what they've done as a, you know, preparation of these uh, questions, they actually created this uh, distinction between query and the background. And in the background, they have, uh, so for example, what kind of complications related to COVID-19 are associated with hypertension? In the background, they have uh, clarification, which is seeking specific outcomes that hypertensive uh, any type patients are more or less likely to face if infected with the virus. So I actually feel that the background has more uh, information, more knowledge in terms of um, what exactly uh, we should be uh, kind of matching to because the question itself, what kind of complications doesn't really mean anything as you've as you pointed out. So maybe the, the question answering is really um, kind of like segmenting the background um, information into different tokens and then trying to, to build this, um, let's say entity graph that we can find specific paragraphs um, from the scientific literature to match to. Yeah, I agree, that would be good. Yeah, no. Thinking more about it, I just wrote that. I think that trying to understand what's the implicit theory behind the question is useful because then we can, maybe we got we get it wrong, in which case we can save a lot of back and forth. Or we can say, well, here's the evidence for that implicit theory, but which may not have been clear in the original question. Yeah, um, we have a couple of you know, NLP people, you know, NLP researchers like Svetlana. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, if she has any kind of uh, ideas on, on this part of the, the process. Um, Svetlana, um, are you able to, to speak? Uh, yeah, um, so to be honest, actually, the part of the reason I joined the call today is because I don't have so much experience in question answering in particular. So um, I'm actually, uh, I would say not the best person to come with a kind of knowledgeable background on this. Um, it's something that, you know, I would have to go back and start uh, reading about uh, once again, because um, last time I read about it was, you know, during my degree. Um, so I'm actually really enjoying this conversation about how the sort of the micro level questions are tied to the macro level questions and this point that um, Siddhartha mentioned as well, where it's difficult to sort of tease apart the two kind of um, like, like whether something is really the cause of COVID itself or the treatment from COVID. Like I think the, I like this line of questioning. And then as for how to actually implement something like this, I would say it's just a matter of, you know, researching the latest techniques. I think that IBM Watson is a little bit of an older method at this point. And I know that there are, you know, neural methods that are out there, but um, I just don't want to speak confidently about the research on it at the moment. Thank you. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Jack is sending a lot of relevant links to the Ellen NLP uh, challenges on question answering. So I think there's uh, plenty for us to digest from, from that direction. Um, in terms of, um, do we have any other people um, that have some ideas how to approach the challenge? Mario? Hello, everyone. Uh, well, I, I don't have so much experience in question answering, uh, but actually I was taking a specialization course in uh, I for medical treatment, and they actually built a question answering system using BioBert embeddings, and they start to work with, uh, you know, the probability of the answer to start in some part of the phrase. So you have this background as a, a relevant information piece for your question. And then you start to labeling how probable is that the answer is between these phrases. The problem with that approach is that it requires a, a really huge amount of label information like you have in some benchmarks like a squat. Uh, 
but it's it's a a first guess that that you can use to to approach this problem. Okay, uh, some researchers also have these uh, relevant resources classification. You have the query and you say how related is this paragraph of a certain item to this query. If it can contain valuable information, then you start with the question and learning process. So I think that this could be a, a really good starting point uh, to classify if a paragraph uh, can have relevant information about the question. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Uh, by the way, have anyone here worked with squad uh, benchmark and data set? Uh, I've made a few things, but uh, all, you know, a standard book exercises, nothing more fancy than that. Well, that, that's better than nothing. Um, I haven't played around with it, so um, you're more expert on it than, than I am. Does anyone else um, have experience with it? Uh, just to bring up uh, what we're talking about, um, it's, it's the Stanford question answering data set. And it's actually de facto benchmark for different systems when it comes to Q&A. So it has 100,000 questions and answerable um, things. I think it's built on top of Wikipedia and, and other um, open knowledge uh, storages. Yeah, Wikipedia articles. All right, uh, we got Matan uh, sending some messages. Um, I think we can approach it uh, by first looking at the expected result, which we have been practicing with the literature review tool. I think we will identify different levels of detail, like Svetlana said, research current methods. Yeah, so um, maybe we should start from actually classifying these questions manually and going through them and identifying which level of granularity they, they land on. Because obviously, when we talk about the question, what is the origin of COVID-19, that's a very, very high level question, but it has some granularity in it when it comes to, you know, statements and research papers that may say that, you know, it comes from pangolin or bats or any other things. But when it comes to questions such as, does vitamin D impact COVID-19 prevention and treatment? That's a very, very granular, granular question that I believe we may even use Indra statements to, to enrich any kind of statements from the COVID 19 data set. So it's maybe that's the first uh, challenge. Um, I can uh, convert the, the JSON into a Google spreadsheet and we can list out different columns for granularity. Does anyone have a, a good framework for how we would classify these questions? Why not to get it uh, imported to uh, the Kana, for example? In the Kana, um, you, you, you can actually uh, create labels and uh, assign every label to a uh, research question. Let's do it. I think that's a great idea. I, I think uh, I was wondering, like, with that last call that we just had, can you like annotate the questions, and that helps in classification, in some sense, like you know, like the way they were annotating literature. We can annotate questions. Uh, I don't know if that's a valid way. Yeah. So Docano is actually the tool that we have on on our labs that uh, we can import oh, yeah. uh, any text data, and we can annotate or you know, um, basically this is. This is something for, for us to visually annotate papers. So let's try that. And the outcome will be, you know, a list of entities and uh, we can import both the question and background information. So taking this, um, obviously, if we're talking about vitamin D, let's see where that question is. Um, so yeah, vitamin D, an entity, then uh, sit can storm, you know, all of these things can be annotated. So let's do that first. I think that that will be a good exploratory uh, framework for us. Uh, Salva, are you able to import uh, these questions into? The I think so. Yeah, it can take oh. some time, but but uh, I think it's uh, feasible. 
And uh, I have another suggestion. Uh, so what I see from these questions, we should really uh, try to find some data from all these core 19 papers. Because uh, part of uh, those questions related to uh, data, data sets, right? Not directly to uh, some para paragraph of uh, text, but uh, they are looking for some data that can explain something. Yeah, like clinical trials. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but then it's, it's again like, uh, you know, this, uh, it could be a clinical trial, it could be a cell line, it could be an animal model. So you get into the same kind of thing as a literature review. So when you talk of data, there is obviously, it could be, a, you know, vitamin D, you know, having an effect. So do you try it on a mouse or do you try it on a human, you know, uh, or observational or control trial? So it gets into all of that complication. I mean, as long as we are fine with that. But uh, I mean, definitely that's you know, needed at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. with Mario just sent this con convey uh, .io, which is clarifying questions for open domain dialog systems. That's awesome. Uh, definitely something for us to, to look at. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. So, uh, clear, clear key. Yeah. Um, so, initiative um, to study the following situation. User is asking an ambiguous question. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. So we should look into it. All right. Yeah, a, a lot of links. Powerful text annotation and harvesting platform is gate. Uh, so Jack just sent us um, a tool. Open source software toolkit. Um, probably useful too. Let's research on that. And Matan sent us a hot pot Q and A data set for diverse, explainable, multi-hop question answering. So this looks like a version of Squad, right? Kind of does. Nice. So that's another data set that we can uh, use to train the model. Uh, maybe it it would be actually helpful for someone to assemble all of these data sets in, in one place. Um, do we have Mauricio here? Yeah, we do. Uh, Mauricio, if, if you have uh, some time to um, collect all of these data sets that are used for Q&A systems, that would help us uh, organize the, uh, the benchmarks in all of these systems. Uh, will you be able to, to take that on? I can take a look, yeah. Uh, awesome. Do we have centralized somewhere or where, where can I? So I'm, I'm kind of juggling some some stuff right now. So I'm kind of in the, in the call on one side and doing some other oh, stuff. On the no problem. We'll shoot you a, a more formalized uh, trial card to focus on. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Cool. So uh, it sounds like we should um, load the questions into the Kano, uh, attempt to label them. Um, search for all available data sets and uh, systems for um, the be benchmarking uh, Q&A challenges. And let's start putting those into some central place. Maybe we can do Notion um, as, as one of the methods. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's a good way to start. So do you have a Notion access or? Uh... Have Actually, Anton um, created Notion, so um, maybe he will will share a link for the specific one for COVID questions, or I can just go ahead and create a team one. Um, that that's probably a better idea. Um, I w I had a question. Uh, Matan made the uh, the point, and I agree totally. We're looking for relationship in hierarchy, right? Between the more abstract question about abstract terms and more concrete terms. And I know that you have ontologies for say specific disease and medication and da da da. Do those ontologies have the more abstract terms and will you be able to annotate those as abstract in the Kano or whatever you use to do the annotation? No, it's uh, it's not the kind of, uh, you need hypothesis. It's another tool. We also have it in our infrastructure. So you, you can just select piece of text and you can just provide some information. 
So you're basically uh, creating an extra layer on top of information presented in some paper. Okay, so, so the Kano has a fixed vocabulary. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yeah. And the fixed vocabulary doesn't have many generics. Exactly. Most. So, so you Maybe need to I, would, I think that would be really worth spending time on enriching the vocabulary with generic terms. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I think you'd, get, you'd gained a lot of power there. Is it possible to, to uh, set up a call to go through quickly the Kana and hypothesis? Um, the Kana looks pretty intuitive to me, but I remember trying to play around with hypothesis a while back and not really understanding how to use it. So, sorry, can, can you repeat your question about? Sure. Sure. Sorry. I'm just, just wondering if we can set up a quick, maybe 15 or 20 minute call at some point just to go yeah. over how to, how to use yeah. the Kana and hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Awesome, yeah. let's do it. Um, do, you, do you guys want to, to do it tomorrow? Just to schedule it right here on the spot. Um, okay, tomorrow, how about 10 a.m. Pacific, which is uh, an hour before now? Yeah, that works for me. Okay, I'm um, scheduling the Kana overview. Sounds good. And in terms of the general entities and uh, general vocabularies, um, don't we already have that through like um, the Wikidata ontology, Slava? Yeah. So what, what we can do, we, we can quickly uh, link entities and uh, we can get MASH and uh, Wiki, Wikidata and other classifications. So basically we can turn all these questions to some list of entities and uh, after we can just look up for these entities in, in some papers. We also have uh, core 19 uh, entities. We should have in our elastic anyway. <laughs> so it's also, it can be a nice uh, starting point. Sounds good. Um, we have a lot of people actually, 32 people now. Uh, does anyone else um, have any kind of additional items that we could add to our exploratory next step? All right. Um, so I think uh, we can we can essentially agree on uh, creating this shared space, uh, accumulating the knowledge, uh, loading the the questions into the Kana. Uh, are going to have a call on the Kana uh, demo overview tomorrow, and we can start from there. And Maurizio will help us organize the data sets and potentially organize all the existing benchmarks that exist. And we can start from there. Awesome. awesome. Sounds like a plan. Well, the, uh, unless anyone else have uh, has any questions, uh, we can wrap it up. But let's Let's give people five minutes um, in case there are any questions. I'll just mute myself. Uh, hi, everyone. So just quickly, Victor Mireles, I uh, haven't been here for long, but I will share with you on the chat a uh, deliverable for a project I have been involved in, um, which also deals with question answering and goes more or less in the direction of what has just been mentioned of tagging with entities and then trying to find documents that contain entities in common with the questions. There is some work uh, there in this deliverable and also in the references therein that might be um, interesting to people. I will put it in the chat at, uh, right now. Amazing, thank you. And um, is that challenge related to COVID or just a general? Just uh, no, it's a EU uh, Horizon 2020 project about legal domain stuff, like answering questions from lawyers about laws or something. Like that. Awesome. Yeah, we we uh, we have a lot of kind of uh, connections to the to the current space of the the open science projects. Uh, Slava is is the one that is bridging the European Union uh, teams. So uh, yeah, looking forward to to collaborate with you on on that if if there is some relevancy points. Sure.
Okay, I, I know this project. So thanks, Victor. Small world. Yeah, in Europe, it's, it's really small. <laughs> Especially semantic web community, uh, basically everybody knows each other, so. <laughs> it's, it's oh, like, so it's actually knowledge graph uh, related. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, uh, Victor, actually, uh, I would love to connect with you sometime soon for just like introduction uh, to the community because it seems like we're working on a lot of things um, in relation to building knowledge graphs and um, just the open data infrastructure for that. Um, Slava is going to be presenting on, uh, on the webinar about how we built the knowledge graph for COVID-19. So yeah, just um, are you in our Slack? Uh, you're muted. I am, and I, ha I will attend this Lava's webinar. Uh, I got in touch. Awesome. With I'll ping you in, in the DM. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Any other questions, suggestions? Oh, yes, maybe me, a layman's question, so maybe a stupid question. I wonder to which, in which extent um, non-scientific papers, maybe research publications, articles are uh, incorporated or maybe of use. Um, so that's It's my interesting because um, the challenge is actually split into two data sets, the scientific literature uh, data set and the consumer articles, kind of the layman uh, information. So I'm, I'm actually not sure the, if we're supposed to be mixing up those together or that's strictly uh, to be you know, separated, but it will be interesting to actually cross, uh, cross pollinate those, especially if we aim to extend the uh, this question answering system beyond the challenge and augment it was data like you know the Twitter um, uh, uh, Twitter graph of of questions and answers that uh, happens from um, let's say somewhat qualified people that's also something to be um, <laughs> to be determined but if there are epidemiologists on Twitter and they're answering questions that could be potentially helpful to enrich the, the Q&A system with. Yeah, because I'm also referring to, let's say my, my pretty uh, detailed reaction uh, was yesterday, I thought, but um, being just a perspective, being scientific papers, uh, being, uh, let's say the end of the line, work done and, um, so and I, I'm not a scientist, but I know that uh, such a scientific paper comes up with, you know, suggestions for follow-up research, questions, um, and I, I expect that when things are not yet in in, in a well-defined scientific research project, ending up in a scientific paper, that maybe some intermediate results or questions or thoughts are uh, then maybe publicized in, in, in another trustworthy channel or uh, maybe a more philosophical approach or uh, out of context approach on, on medium. And that might be interesting to, to, to track, let's say, art threads of research or thoughts or uh, cross discipline type of, of, of things. So, um, it's just to stretch, let's say, to stretch the maybe somewhat narrow, um, char narrow um, uh, character of, of scientific, uh, scientific papers. That's why. Uh, also to extend, let's say, the, the, the timeline in terms of creativity and, and research, what goes before sci really scientific, well-defined scientific research and what's beyond could be, let's say, further down the line. That's why. 
Yeah, uh, I agree. There is something to to explore in that. Anyone else? All right. Well, thanks everyone for jumping in today. Um, kind of a, a shorter call than, uh, than we expected, but I think that's also uh, a sign of the clear direction and clear next steps that we need to take. So let, uh, we have a channel on Slack called Team COVID Questions, and uh, feel free to, uh, to join this one if you haven't yet. I'll be posting the recording uh, shortly and we'll, we'll kick off the Trello board. Um, Matan will probably help uh, me establish a process for that and we'll reconvene early next week on the progress um, with, with these specific tasks. And I'll, I'll ping you Slava on the, the Kana route, route too. All right, sounds good. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.